Hello everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks of this new video card from Sapphire. This is the Sapphire AMD R9 280X Toxic. Now if you're not familiar with the R9 280X, this is AMD's, uh, one of AMD's newest GPUs. It's based on the same GCN architecture as you can see right there as their 7000 series of graphics cards. So the 7970 is kind of where this card uh, gets its roots from, but uh, this is sort of a tweaked and retuned and updated version of that. And this is Sapphire's highest end uh, version of the R9 280X. So this one is overclocked right out of the box and it's extremely overbuilt as well. But uh, first off, some uh, bona fides from the box here. You get a bundled HDMI high-speed cable, 1.8 meter. That's pretty nice to have. Three gigabytes of GDDR5 memory integrated, and that's running at 6.4 gigahertz effectively. That's 400 megahertz faster than the uh, stock or reference clock. This card is overclocked out of the box. The GPU has a base clock of 1100 megahertz. That's 29% faster than the uh, R9-280X uh, default, which is 850, and a boost clock of 1150 megahertz, which is 15% faster than the standard 280X of 1000 megahertz. So again, overclocked out of the box with more overclocking headroom available to you as well. You also get to AMD Affinity support so you can use multiple monitors out of the box with this card. And then you get toxic features, which is gonna be uh, the uh, cooler as well as uh, a lot of the uh, built-in componentry for power delivery. Also over on the right side of this box, you see UEFI ready. That's because this uh, board actually has a little two-way switch uh, it has a dual BIOS or a vBIOS. You can switch back and forth, so if you are using Windows 8 and a UEFI system, the graphics card can tie in uh, with your low-level uh, system boot-up functions and basically give you faster boot times, and that is very nice to have. Now, on the back of the box, we have some more information here. So, uh, the Sapphire Toxic R9 280X is mad and dangerous, so be careful. You can read up on all that text right there if you want to know why it's so mad and so dangerous. Uh, but let's see. Get sheer brute performance for the most serious multi-screen gamers, most demanding graphically intensive task featuring factory overclocked engine and memory speeds for best-in-class performance, eight-phase digital power, black diamond chokes, PCB temperature indicator, and high-efficiency direct FET power delivery. Uh, they're also using fast memory again, 384-bit GDDR5 memory, again at 6.4 gigahertz effective. Uh, you get the Tri-X triple fan cooler with two 90 millimeter and two uh, and one 80 millimeter fan. It's integrated, uh, and then you also have access to the Sapphire Trix software, which is a software-based graphics card configuration and overclocking utility, and again, dual BIOS functionality so that you can uh, switch back and forth between them if you like modifying different BIOSes, or again, you can uh, switch to the UEFI, up, uh, UF, UEFI ready one if you have that capability on your system. But enough about the box, let's, uh, let's look inside. Inside the retail box, we have another box which has the card inside of it. There's the card. I'm going to come back to that after I go over the accessories that are included right down here. Okay. You know, let me just set that down there. Okay, so uh, accessory wise, we have uh, Sapphire manufacturer contact information, so you can contact Sapphire if you have any issues. To take advantage of the warranty for this card, which is a two-year manufacturer warranty, here's a quick installation guide that's also available. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video on Newegg TV if you're not comfortable with video card installation. Uh, product registration form and some information about Sapphire stuff. We have a couple uh, these little adapters. Basically, these are PEG or PCI Express graphics connectors. Each of these will take a couple Molex plugs from your power supply and convert them to an 8-pin PCI Express graphics connector. You do need two 8-pin PCI Express graphics connectors for this particular uh, graphics card. And one thing from the box that I did not mention, which I should have, which is right over here, are system requirements. OK, uh, speaking of which, 750 watt or greater power supply uh, recommended for this particular graphics card with a 150 watt 8 pin PCI Express power connector. So uh, make sure you have a beefy uh, power supply, 750 watts minimum, 1000 watts if you happen to be taking two of these cards and connecting them together in a crossfire configuration, which would be pretty sweet. Um, but again, make sure you got plenty of power available for that. Uh, I'm not going to bother to open this one, but this is that uh, 1.8 meter HDMI cable that's included in the box which is nice to have. You can't have too many HDMI cables, in my personal opinion. Crossfire bridge right there, one of the standard ones. It says Crossfire on it, kind of bronze in color. It is a flexible version, so you can use that for a few different spacings of the graphics card, depending on 
how the spacing of your motherboard is laid out. And then we also have an adapter here, which is a mini display port to standard display port adapter, which I also find I can never have too many of these things. So nice of them to drop one of those in the box. Lastly, you have a driver installation disc, which is most likely outdated by the time you get this card. So go ahead and go to the uh, AMD website to download the latest drivers for the card. And then you also get a Sapphire case, bed, case badge in there as well. And here is the card itself. Now this is a sample that was sent over by Sapphire and I will admit that I've already been uh, installing it and benchmarking it. And that's, but I did put this plastic back on to give you that new graphics card smell uh, when I take it out, but that's why it's a little bit messed up. But anyway, there's the card itself. As you can see, uh, we have sort of a deep yellow or darker yellow and black color scheme going on. We got some orange up there and that little accents. Uh, we also have a black and gray uh, back plate for the board which keeps it uh, nice and stable and sturdy. There's a look at the I.O. We're going to come back to that again as well. Just kind of giving you guys a full 360 view of this card. That's what it's going to look like when it's actually installed in your system or that's the view that you will most likely have. So you got your Sapphire logos there as well as the light up one that is right there. Now measurement wise this card is specced at 12 and a half inches. If you measure from the bracket it's actually a little bit closer to 12 inches as you can probably see. I would say maybe a, a, a quarter of an inch or less beyond that to make sure you have plenty of space in your case. But this is a fairly substantial card, so again, make sure you got the room in the case if you're going to be grabbing it to install it. Uh, now let's take a look first at the cooler, which is right here on top. It has a metal and plastic bracket, so there's some metal pieces that are uh, connected right there, the black and then the uh, colored piece underneath is plastic. Again, three fans here, so uh, an 80 millimeter in the middle, two 90 millimeters on either side. Those are downward firing over the fin array, which you can probably see beneath that really huge aluminum fin array, and that is aided by uh, some heat pipes. Now, I'm not going to do a disassembly of this card today. I opted to do the benchmarks instead. I figured you guys would appreciate those a little bit more, but you can see some breakdowns of this card at some websites online. If you're interested in more, go ahead and just search for this card. I'm sure you will find them. Uh, but heat pipe-wise, you got five of them, which are uh, moving from the GPU, which is located right about here, out into those fin arrays, including a massive 10 millimeter heat pipe, which goes across the center right there, out into this uh, really beefy rear one. Aside from that, we also have some additional cooling uh, provided by uh, some of these little heat sinks they've, they've attached under the board right there, for example. And again, those are going to be providing some cooling for, for example, the 10-phase power delivery that's uh, integrated into this card. You actually have an 8-phase power delivery system for the GPU itself and a 2-phase power delivery for the memory I.O. And that is uh, extra power simply because this is an overclock card. Uh, Sapphire is running it at a GPU voltage of 1.256 volts, which is higher than the uh, rated voltage for the 290 or for the 280X, uh, and that's uh, extra power. Just making sure you've got everything you need, especially if you're going to be overclocking this beyond the 1,150 megahertz boost clock that it ships with out of the box. Apart from that, the GPU, uh, which is located kind of at the center right there. Uh, again, two, 2048 stream processors, 128 texture units, uh, 32 ROPs, uh, again, 3 gigabytes of VRAM, and then uh, typical TDP for this board is going to be 250 watts, or actually beyond that with the overclock. Uh, we're just seeing greater than 250 watts according to the specs from Sapphire. Uh, this is a two-slot card, so double width, so if you look at it from this side, even though it does have a very substantial uh, cooler on it, it still maintains the two-slot uh, spacing. So that does mean that you could fit two of these side by side or if uh, you're planning on packing in more than two or three of these onto a board with a Crossfire X configuration, you do have the space available to do that. Two-year warranty, uh, manufacturer warranty from Sapphire once again, so they are standing behind this product if you have any issues. Uh, you've got your PCI Express Gen 3 connector down there at the bottom. Uh, it's Gen 3 compatible. It's also backwards compatible with PCI Express Gen 2. Around on this side, you can see your uh, power connection points, two 8-pin PCI Express graphics power connectors are uh, what you're going to want to plug in right there. Uh, and then you do have the BIOS switch, which is available, which is located right up there. Okay, you can see the little Sapphire logo on that button. Just push the button. It's a two-position button to switch between the default BIOS, which will be compatible with the uh, older BIOSes, uh, like G uh, motherboard BIOSes, I should say. And then you've got the uh, secondary BIOS, which is a UEFI compatible one. So if you're running a UEFI motherboard and you're going through Windows 8 installation, uh, you can use that for maximum compatibility. And it can get you some really, really fast boot times, which is always very nice. We'll finish uh, with one last look at the uh, back plate here again. 
gray and black is a color scheme. It's got kind of a little bit of a brushed metal feel on it. Uh, you can also see some of these black diamond solid chokes located right here. Uh, it's a pretty cool design for them. They've actually put uh, some ridges on them to provide a bit of extra surface area to provide some extra cooling on those chokes. And I know I said we were going to end right there, but I forgot. We have I.O. as well. Uh, so I.O. available here at the back. First off, over on this side, you can see a couple dual-link DVI outputs. Those will support uh, resolutions up to 2560 by 1600. Uh, bear in mind that the lower one here is uh, analog and digital. The upper one here is digital only, so you're not going to be able to use that with a DVI to VGA adapter. Over here, you have uh, your HDMI 1.4 output, and then you got two mini DisplayPort 1.2 outputs. Uh, you can use one of those with that adapter. If you are using standard size display ports, make sure you grab another adapter so you can do uh, display port to mini to standard display port, which, which is always helpful if you want to plug this graphics card into your monitor. Uh, and now we'll be checking out some benchmarks. I'm just going to be throwing this up against a overclocked uh, 7970 uh, from last generation. So without further ado, here's a look at some benchmarks. And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Hopefully you have enjoyed and learned a little bit more about the Sapphire R9 280X Toxic. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful or informative or entertaining or you just like me stumbling over my words, click the like button. It's located right down there. You can also leave us some feedback in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear it. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time.